And because we're a family company, I'm also the mum. <laughs> Um, I've brought along my husband and business partner, Jason, for those of you who don't know him, which is Andy's day distressing for you. Uh, we're both ex-crone, we've both worked in games since the end of last century, and we went indie about four years ago, when it was either that or star. We haven't quite managed to take <laughs> salvation <laughs> <laughs> quite managed to take salvation off the table yet, but um, we're working on it. <laughs> Uh, we're currently, oh, she might have hit up That's me. That's him. We're currently working on a game called Ninja Pizza Girl, which we successfully kickstarted last year. And uh, we just released it on early access. So you tell all your friends and your mum. Um, speaking of early access, this is an early access talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> This is an alpha, like a, yeah, point, yeah. a 0 0.1 of the score. We want to try something a bit different, but it's, it's not finished and it's not polished. And we'd like to thank you for being the dead singer. It, it may have some bugs and it may crash unexpectedly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there won't be any hard crashes. It's my time. I think they get to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Pretend you haven't seen all that stuff a bit. Um, I don't think this is a new problem. Uh, the, the problem we're having with gameplay and narrative. I, I think particularly uh, lately, it's, it's narrative in video games is getting a bit of a backlash. People just, I just want to play games. I just want there to be gameplay. And cutscenes in particular are coming under fire, and it just produces eye rolling. I don't think that's because plot in the games is bad, I just think it's been badly done, which is sort of what we're going to talk about here. But I don't think this is a new problem. Uh, in literature, books, if, if anyone's not familiar with them, because they read, they're pretty cool, check them out. <laughs> don't need electricity unless you've got them on your iPad and they do need electricity. Uh, the big problem there was plot versus character plot-driven or character-driven. So if you're talking about a uh, plot-heavy uh, book, we're talking something like a James Bond film, where, you know, this is the guy, and they're planning to do the thing, and but he does the thing, and then they betray them, and then they go, but who cares about the characters? I don't know what gets James Bond up in the morning. I don't know what makes him laugh or cry. What's his favorite book or movie? I don't think he goes to movies. They're, they're very paper thin, but lots of stuff happens, and it's very interesting. And on the other hand, you have character-driven stuff, which is uh, basically what I said, any Academy Award-winning film. Uh, I was going to use Driving Miss Daisy, but that was kind of unfair because I ne never watched the film because it looked boring as shit. <laughs> um, 
But I assume it was a lot of people sitting around talking about their feelings for two hours until the audience shot themselves. Um, and, and there was a lot of debate in literature and film about you know, how you should go about writing things, whether things should be character driven, whether they should be plot driven, uh, whether this is an inherent conflict, and can you do something that has both? And of course you can, because of my wonderful reveal, which is probably what's the next step? <laughs> There we go, of course, again. Game of Thrones. Awesome piece of writing. Is it's laced with plot. Stuff happens every episode. About 16 things happen every episode. And yet that does not compromise the characters in the slightest. That is the richest, most interesting characters probably on television at the moment. And that's because I was taught this in film school. There is no conflict between character and plot because character is revealed when characters react to stuff happening to them. So the more stuff that happens to them, the more opportunities you have for them to express character by doing something. <laughs> like um, uh, requesting, what's it, the combat? He always, what, what does this character always do when he's on trial? Trial by combat. <laughs> that's, that's what he does. And it was interesting, it was cool. And now you have to talk. But it, <laughs> so, so we're going to talk about the same thing, about resolving the same problem in video games. The first thing I was going to talk about what happens when it's not done very well. Is that one? You've got your own microphone. All right. So, so when you have asked this, when you just go, you know, I need some motivation here, but I'm not going to worry too hard about whether it really works with what your character is actually doing. Then you get the dreaded cognitive dissonance, which is a wonderful word to use in conversation, and actually... Or ludonarrative dissonance. No. <laughs> which sounds like ludonarrative dissonance. It sounds awesome. Even like you. I don't even know what it means. So you get this situation. Or this situation. <laughs> or, you know, even Tomb Raider, <laughs> where I love this but, you know, you could tell they were obviously had the people that made the game and the person that wrote the game, and they just didn't. You know, let's make a story about someone who's scared and vulnerable and unleash her with a bow and arrow to, like, play fucking waste. And, you know, all these people going, she's just a little girl. She's just a little girl who killed 300 people with a bow and arrow, not to mention all the deer. <laughs> it's not safe to be a deer on that one. But now, interactive. Yeah, yeah. This is the interactive bit. Yeah. Oh, is this the interactive bit? Yes. Oh, all right, okay, what is it? So, right. I could have come up with oh, more okay, examples. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right, all right, I guess it. So, we're, we're going to ask for more examples. Okay, so everyone's played, everyone's played games here. Yeah. Okay, so everyone's uh, had a moment in a game where they go, where, where it's silly, where the plot just isn't making sense. So we we're talking about like um, poor Ares who couldn't be read, revived with the Phoenix down. Okay, so we need three. We need three people to stand up and give just a quick example. This is the interactive bit. Come on, reach into the past. This is the voluntary one. Yeah. Oh, we need someone. Or, the, or it just stops here. We just put the mics down and we just wait and stare at you. <laughs> so that happens. Come on. Stand up. Someone. There we go. Okay. Come on. Okay. Um, well, the upcoming Batman game, for example, Batman is motivated by the fact that his parents were gunned down in a way. Yeah. He has a tank that he uses to blow up criminals and destroy the city that he's trying to protect. So. <laughs> <laughs> that looks fun, but yeah. 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 Oh, okay. That's, oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Bioshock Infinity, uh, no, Infinite, sorry, where, yeah. it's, uh, where the fact that they sell vigors on the street as like street tonics which give you bona fide real magical powers and your character is the only one that seems to use them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your character is super special even though the tech that makes him super special is freely available. It's literally sold on yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else going, we need one more? Yeah, we need one more. We need one more for the talk to progress, otherwise it just stands here broken. Do you want a blue screen? 
Draw you play a million games. Come on, pick a random game that you like and bring out something silly in it. It doesn't make sense. He's been making his own games. All of us. I'm not sure if it's quite what you're after, but it certainly gives me that whole narrative dissonance feeling. You've got. Let's say Mass Effect. You're right at the yeah. end, you're charging down towards the thing, the music's dramatic, yeah. there's explosions going off everywhere, the, the entire universe is on your shoulders, and you slip and you fall and you go somewhere else, and the game just goes, oh, we'll just try it again, and again, yeah. and yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, uh, even that, even death and replayability, yeah. which, which is cool, because <laughs> that leads into one of my examples for stuff. Well, you've got to save the world, but no, quick, first you've got to fix this guy's daddy issue. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're the most important person. Yeah, and if the most important thing in the world is for Shepard to defeat this guy, what's, why does he call all his buddies and go, let's get 50 people to defeat this guy? And why is this one guy so dangerous that can be taken down by a squad of four anyway? We've got to stop this ultimate weapon. Only four people with fairly rudimentary weaponry can stop it. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of things like that. As soon as you start thinking of them, there's all these little... And you can forgive a lot of them. We do, every time we play a video game. We know it's a video game. It doesn't have to be perfect, but every, every little conflict just takes you out a little bit. Anyway. That's that was the interactive segment. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We can we can see now. Here we go. And this is why I believe that this is important, and this is why we're doing the talk. Because games are playing Let's Pretend. I did not invent Doc McStuffins. That's a real thing. I just typed let's pretend into Google and that's what it gave me. I think it's awesome. Because this is what we're doing every time we play a video game. We're playing let's pretend. We don't like to say that. Call of Duty ads really don't like to say that. They don't like to say we're, we're pretending to be soldiers. We're playing make-believe. Uh, and, and, you know, look, particularly if you go on forums, how? Tough and macho is the talk of the 12 year olds there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's just the gameplay, man. I don't care about this. Sort of crap. It's just the gameplay. And you go, okay, cool. If it's just the gameplay, I'll replace them all with ponies and you shoot your unicorns. And there's rainbows and love hearts everywhere. And we'll see if you still play Call of Duty. I won't touch the gameplay. <laughs> I'll just reskin it so you'll never go near it again. Of course it matters. And, and integrating narrative, it just helps you play Let's Pretend better. Even if, if, even if the people playing it will never admit it. So, so that's all this is about. It's really just greasing the wheels of playing Let's Pretend. Games that have done well. Dark Souls. Uh, this is just because I will probably put Dark Souls in every talk I ever do for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, I think, what uh, was it? Uh, Honest Trailers? Yeah, honest trailers, we have the guy with the voice. <laughs> he, he referred to Dark Souls as this, the flawed masterpiece, and I think it's the best way of describing the game, because it is flawed to hell and back. Uh, this game has made me so angry, it's made everyone so angry. From its difficulty curve, <laughs> to its systems, which it completely fails to explain, to its complete drop-off, and uh, it, it's, the pacing is terrible towards the end, uh, you know, it's got problem after problem after problem, and you don't care. It's one of the most compelling experiences ever made in games because it marries all of its game mechanics into the world. You, we're talking about dying. Dying over and over and over again is part of the story. That futility, that frustration, that sense of helplessness is built into the story. The loneliness of just wandering around the world that's completely antagonistic to you is built into the story. Uh, the way it handles multiplayer is built into the story. You see shadows of other players walking past. And that's not because it's a game, that's because that's what happens in this world. And you become completely submerged. There isn't anything discordant that's pulling you out. You're just wrapped in this eerie, horrible, unforgiving <laughs> nightmare experience. And it, it's just done so well. And even though it's got all these problems, it's undeniably one of the, the greatest games made. Now, I think it will be remembered for a long time. Skyrim. Really, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> Does anyone play it? <laughs> it's a piece of shit. It's like, 
a bunch of bad students who did not pay attention got together and made a game quickly on a low budget. It's terrible. The character controller, my god. If the, does anyone know the person who made the character controller? <laughs> he should be taken outside and punished for a while. It's terrible. The combat system, there is no combat. It's just buggy. Although some of the bugs are good. Uh, we probably push the time so we go into one, but afterwards you go talk to me about some of the other bugs. Very good. <laughs> but once again, everything that happens in that world happens in that world. Uh, and they went further than possibly any other RPG. If you wander into someone's house and just start looting it, this shit might go down. That's awesome. I, I, I love a game that's actually done this, instead of just wandering into wherever, taking people's stuff while they thank you for helping them. It's like, uh, it's ridiculous, but once again, it puts you in there. It, it's tried to simulate a world for you, and it's tried to put you into that world. And so players, the people who love it, it's still being played. It was still the centre of all that controversy, the, um, the modern controversy recently, because it's still going, it's still big. And uh, I believe because it's done this, it's married narrative and gameplay, it's either called you in there, there's no conflict between what the player's experiencing and what the character's experiencing, or at least there's, there's less than most. And I think it goes a long way to, to making players who give a game its scores. We need three more, and this time you don't get to pick, I just point. You. <laughs> a game, a game that you love, that sucked you in. Um, I recently been playing Dark Souls. Sorry. Okay, I'm that's fine, that's fine, it's an honest voice. answer, it's an honest answer. Um, for the first, I mean, I didn't play it back when it came out. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but around the beginning of the year, I decided to well, yeah, enough people. Enough people that I respected to say, this has been the best game I've played in forever. <laughs> and I've gone. I would say best, but it's a game you probably should play. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, this was the opinion of uh, young people in the reviewing media thing, where it always was this. They didn't talk about it all the time, but when they did, you could see that their eyes right after me. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the experience been like for you? Um, it's a game that pretty much lives up to its hype. All the hype of the community around the enthusiasts. Um, they don't... I like games which they, um, you get thrown into and they don't tell you anything. Mm. Or they tell you very minimal things about it and then you've got to sit down and puzzle it out for yourself. Yeah, which I was going to bring back to the point of this. That's kind of where you but that's what happens to your character in the game. It's like he's done yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and she to to make it a comparison to other media, yeah. or a movie that I've argued the pros and cons of yeah. more than anything else, um, is Children of Men, where the viewpoint is very close to the character. Yes. And you're not given you're given some sort of expertise, but it's through the eyes of propaganda videos being shown to you as kind of being exposed to them in the in the world. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, so, so, so you really don't take that backstory with a grain of salt. Oh, cool. Um, and you're, you never really fully understand the motivations of everybody involved because oh. it's all kept very close to the main protagonist. So the audience's perceptions, the, the information the audience has is very close to the information the protagonist yes, has. That's cool. Alright. Did you get out last time? <laughs> you were making it. Yeah, you just so said you had been playing games. Yeah. Come on, you're in front. Come on, what's a game you've liked in the past that's worked well it hasn't in the sense? Already, hasn't that has been mentioned already. You can do one that's been mentioned already if you want. You can say good things about something I said was bad. I like the ones that you said were good. <laughs> <laughs> I've used up all of them, there are no other games. I never into this either, and I always use the last one's games. I don't want those ones to help, it's making me more aggressive for me. But I got that one, I loved it. The first thing I did before I even Play that was well into the mod sites and got all these like HDR and high def mods and everything yeah. to put in the depth of field. It, it, it's, it's funny because the stuff. mod that Raven got, the one the first one she's installed, was one which took breasts off the lizard race. <laughs> and it was the <laughs> same thing, it was the same thing. If you want to mod it to make it more, that's interesting, but yeah, because people do mod it to fit their, their idea of reality. Yeah, because reptiles shouldn't have boobs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Even girl lizards don't have boobs. Is it not recipe? It's a great job. Yeah. Anyway, so she can spill that one. Okay, one more, one more, one more. You can do it. Yeah, sure. I'll volunteer. Yeah, yeah. volunteer. Metro Prime. Ah, I haven't played it. Yeah. I know it's a crime, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, because it, the way it did its narrative, it, its narrative is about isolation. And you experience the world alone as a, and you're a bounty hunter, but you, you have this sense of isolation and self-reliance throughout the whole thing. I do really enjoy drawing you into the environment that one because the yeah. heart was essentially a heads-up display on your visor in the game. Yeah. Uh, so so you're looking through the visor she's looking through. Yeah. And she's got yeah. more splashes on it or it distorts the way. Yeah, yeah, once again, the point of view of the player and the character being brought into the scene. Yeah. Cool. Alright. What's next? Because I can't remember. It's your bit. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. okay. So we set out to make a game that would make money. <laughs> we thought it would be, you know, cute, but funny, people would like it. Um, and instead we found ourselves making a serious game and being invited to panels with our empathy games and being mentioned in the same articles as that dragon cancer. <laughs> which is amazing. Oh, God. But we didn't set out to make a game about bullying. A few years ago, our eldest daughter was finishing school, learning Kung Fu, and working as a pizza delivery girl. It's a really hard thing for a parent to let your daughter drive around on her own, visiting strangers' houses in the dark. She encountered some pretty challenging situations <laughs> that at first she wasn't sure how to deal with, and I was pretty anxious about. To cheer us up, Jason used to make jokes that her being a ninja pizza girl could you handle anything. And yes, we know that Kung Fu is Chinese and the whole thing really doesn't make sense, but um, <laughs> just work with us here. As it happened, Alia was fine. She did handle everything. She learned a lot about setting boundaries and even more about how to quit a cracker job and get a better one. <laughs> but, um, but we had very little idea what Ninja Pizza Girl would become when we started to work on it. In the beginning, Jason pitched it to me as a 2.5D parkour platformer that was cute and funny. Originally, it focused a lot more on the father character. He was always wise <laughs> and gave great advice. Admittedly, I'm unimpressed with most of Jason's ideas at first. <laughs> but I was particularly met about this one. I didn't want to take my daughters and amalgamate them into a cartoon character. Our daughters' stories are their own to tell, but the too long didn't read version is this. They were bullied at school. Now, Harley is a wonderful young woman, and she was a great kid, but she was born raging against social injustice, and we all know how popular that makes you. And Raven, our second daughter, was diagnosed with Asperger's when she was 14. But before that, all we knew was that she was an odd kid with short views who really liked to draw dragons. <laughs> when she was younger, she had trouble controlling her temper, and the kids soon learned that if they poked her, she'd explode and be the one to get into trouble. And it became a kind of sport for them. As she grew up, she learned better ways to deal, and we're really proud of her for that. But the kids would call her names and tease her, so she'd stay calm. The kids didn't stop, so she'd tell the teacher or tell us. But the teachers did nothing helpful and we didn't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, the kids just kept on being mean, ratcheting up the meanness, hoping for that entertaining explosion. And um, eventually they got sick of her lack of reaction and started beating her up. Whoa. Yeah, and the school suspended her. <laughs> so when Jason started to suggesting possible enemies for Ninja Pizza Girl around the kitchen table, which is where most of our game design happens. Raven firmly vetoed all his suggestions. She didn't have a problem with robots or zombies. She had a big, real and insurmountable problem with other kids. So, while we've been making Ninja Pizza Girl, we've learned a lot about bullying. We, we knew we had something big and real to base our enemies and our story on. 
What we needed was a solution. Now this is tricky because people kind of suck. <laughs> and the people with all of the power in the bullying equation are the bystanders. And unfortunately, a lot of bystanders just blame the victims of bullying. You know, if they weren't so weird, if they just toughened up. But if it wasn't that weird kid with big ears, it would be somebody else. Some people just get pleasure from hurting others. Um, they're called everyday status if you're a psychologist or a psychiatrist, or internet trolls if you're everybody else. <laughs> they're generally rational and self-interested, so it's possible to minimize their hurtful behavior by creating a system where that kind of behavior isn't tolerated. So the negative consequences, like being socially outcast, outweigh the positive you know, oh, I feel good because I call that guy big ears. The person with the least power in the bullying equation is the victim of the bullying. If you can't create sweeping social change to solve your problems, what are you supposed to do? It's possible sometimes to get out of the situation and into a better one. But rather than the solution was to quit school and go to TAFE. The high school environment was never going to work for her, and that's okay because we found one that did. Um, she's actually just started studying animation at um, QCH, she's doing really, really well. And she's like, happy in making friends. Yes, she is. But uh, it's not always possible or desirable to move away from our problems, which is the solution we chose to represent in Ninja Pizza Girl. Our main character, Gemma, is delivering pizza for her dad when all the other kids are working for a mega corporation. They all wear the same mass-produced uniform while she wears a homemade one. The corporation views their advertising cloud to make working for them desirable. So, you know, kids aspire to be a mega co-pizza ninja just so that they can underpay them. People are, are social animals. We don't thrive without connection. If you're isolated from the people in your circle, you get sad. The only way to alleviate that is to spread your circle wider. So you can join clubs, you can join support groups, you can do volunteer work. And failing that is also the internet. It's kind of like the Wild West at the moment, but it's still an awesome creation that makes it a lot easier to find people who think like you. Now, the people with all the power in the bullying equation are the people least affected by it. The bystanders. You can try to connect with them and get them to see you as human and not just some guy with the ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that can be pretty demoralizing if it doesn't work and can leave you open to more bullying. Other than that, all you can do is cope. Learning to box or do karate, do karate just escalates the conflict and you're likely to get beaten up. The luck dragon is really unlikely to come to your rescue. Never <laughs> ending story lied to me. Having a supportive family and a good home base helps, but not everyone is that lucky. It kind of feels like you shouldn't have to, but being your best self and learning to be emotionally resilient is the most important thing you can do. Basically, you need to learn strategies that help you protect your self-esteem despite the battering that it's Three questions. Three questions required to proceed. No. Oh, this is oh, this will be interesting because most people are going to pick you because you've just been talking. Um, That's awesome. Yes, because you're awesome. So okay. You have you have two options. You have the paragon option or the renegade option. <laughs> <laughs> but you must ask one of us. Well, three of you must ask one of us a question. A question. A so three questions all up. It can be about anything. I mean, yes. Obviously, it would probably be about what Nicole was talked about, but it can be three questions about anything. Once again, until the questions get asked. And it can be either one of us. So you have to choose. Yeah. Come on, you can have questions. Come on. You already know everything. <laughs> you can ask me what I'm about to say. Yep. Which one? Uh, you. Sure. Yeah, uh, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Consequences matter. If you ask me, you get a renegade <laughs> point. <laughs> it's being noted. Sure. <laughs> this happens. It's not just a. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, plus one, we're running again. Excellent. Sure. 
Did you consider giving us topics for this part of the, of the talk? No, but we will make some. This, 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 this is a prototype. That's pretty cool. That's a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a question? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicole. Uh, I was wondering. <laughs> Uh, was there anything that you was there anything that was kind of part of the early game that changed substantially once you realised there was this shift to a, a kind of uh, oh, self-esteem? Game changed. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what we were making when we started making it. Um, so we did some kind of talk about that more. But yeah, the whole damn game changed. Was it? Was there, I suppose was there anything particular that you like had to ditch, like that was already there and kind of fleshed out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, yeah, just, well, you can keep answering. Yeah. Um, uh, originally we were just tracking the main character's health, like, you know, she got hurt when she got hurt, and um, the fighting the enemies was physical rather than psychological. And um, the whole... Just everything. Just it. Yeah, just everything. The, the, how, how she attacked, how she, you know, the, the health, the, the goal of the levels. Yeah, Nicole's right here, the whole thing. Yeah. How, how the graphics worked, how the audio worked. Just everything. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> how did you make that? That was bad, I guess. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Either one. No, no, no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we've got one paragon, <coughs> one renegade. This will change the end of the talk. <laughs> it does, it changes the end of the talk. Oh, okay, guys. Okay, we'll go for a paragon. Okay, what was the question? Um, how, did, um, how did you make the bad guys bad? Like, normally, like, you know, you've got, like, you know, if you want to have a character, you want the audience to feel bad, like, make, make sure that the mm. female don't like, don't like that character. Then um, you've got to make them do a lot of bad things so that people have a hatred towards them. Uh, yeah. Or her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how did you create those like the bad characters? I've got a great answer for this. So I hope yours is good. <laughs> 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 no, what about you? Can you say? So, this is a bit tangential, but like the best thing that's ever happened to me was when I was showing this at Pax East. Um, I had a couple of really big gangster-looking guys come up to play it. And, you know, I was a bit intimidated. <laughs> so I just let them play it and didn't do my little powder that I normally do. And they, you know, one guy played the first level where there aren't any enemies and, you know, he did okay. And he got his friend to the second level where there are enemies, they slow you down, you know, call your names and stuff. And uh, the first guy was kind of going, oh, you're not as good as me, you're not as fast or whatever. And the second guy goes, yeah, but these guys are bullying me. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's how we made them back. They're, they're bullies, they tease you, basically. Um, I was reading uh, the art director from Tomb Raider talking about how they wanted you to feel it when Lara got hurt. And, and you do. The first couple of times she gets spiked through the head or whatever, you cringe. But you get used to it. But you never get used to someone saying you suck. Like, I've been playing this game for a couple of years now, and I still will be there going, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, it just, uh, because you haven't played our game, our, our enemies, if, they, if one of them knock you over, everyone else stops, stands back, points and laughs, and they'll, be, they'll just say random insults. And, yeah, and you, you don't need to put any backstory into the bad guys for people to instantly hate them. And, and, and the thing is, they're not... They're not particularly bad kids, they're just, they're just teenagers, you know, this is how teenagers act, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I'll just, this is for the renegade answer that, it was easy, we just made them act like real life people. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we needed to do to make people love them. I shouldn't have given that. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so Nicole told you about pretty much everything she talked about bullying there, the stuff we learned during the course of this game. We, we, and we didn't set out to learn it. Um, it. It was just because of what the game ended up being about. But how does that translate into game uh, mechanics? Who does Gemma fight and how? Gemma fights other kids. 
and she doesn't really fight them. Um, her attacks aren't punching someone in the face. Like, she's not a fighter. She's actually intimidated by physical contact. So what she does, her, her attacks are moving, traversing through the landscape, which is what she does very well. And this is how we designed. Uh, originally, she threw ninja stars, and she just had a, a slice attack. I played a lot of Shinobi, Mega Drive Seeker games. That's where my gameplay heart and soul reside forever. And the Mega Drive games, you used to hide them from the video shop, you'd play them, and a day later, you were done. Um, and so I played a lot of Shinobi 3, I played a lot of Green Beret, which is even older, from the Commodore 64, and that's sort of what it felt like, it was side scrolling, you, But as we learned who Jammer was, these things just didn't gel. And so we ended up with attacks that were more about traversal than attacking someone. She slides, and if someone gets in the way of that sliding, they fall over. They get right back up again. They're not hurt. But she just moves past them. If she's in the air, she can hit a button, and she just basically bounces off their head and moves on. And once again, they get back up. And we've had wonderful situations where kids, because they've been pushed over by these guys and, and girls, we have a half hour as a female. They look nearly identical, by the way, you can barely yeah. tell. Because girls are jerks too. Because girls are jerks too. That was very important to Nicole and Redmond, not me. That girls were equally jerks too. Um, and, and this girl who had been really bullied uh, in real life, um, she's just standing there waiting for the ninja to get back up so she can knock them down again and saying, why won't they die? <laughs> Uh, and you can't kill them. And you're just wasting time because it's, you're delivering a pizza. And so she had, to, she had to learn, according to the rules of the game, the best thing to do was instead of just wasting all this time and energy knocking someone over and over again that was never going to fix anything, she had to deliver the pizza. And that was one of the proudest moments I've ever had playing the game. In fact, what's even more subtle is uh, sliding or bopping someone on the head very slightly slower than avoiding or just jumping. So if you can, if you're not boxed into a corner, the best thing is not to attack them at all. And that's actually in the game mechanics, but it's subtle. So I want people to work that out. So we're actually able to communicate the stuff, the real stuff we've learned about volume, into the game mechanics itself. And by doing that, we've created things that are unique. Because no one's ever made parkour attack moves based on what it's like to be bullied as a teenage girl before. And that's not because we're great games designers, it's just because we chased the narrative, the truth, to its logical conclusions and, and derived from that. Just like Tim does in there, okay? <laughs> there's, our, there's our health bar. There's our health bar. Wow. Wow, that's, that's our most polished health bar. That's Nicole's artwork, by the way. Is it? No, what do you think of the health bar? Actually, we've never focused the health bar. This is an interactive talk, give me your opinion! <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. What's that? It's full. It's full. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's full. Can I see it in context? <laughs> no! <laughs> you cannot see it in context. No, I just it's lovely. I just can't tell yeah. you where the... Because it's not in the game. Right. <laughs> We started off with a very simple health bar, and it didn't work. So we iterated, so it got shiny, and it got swirls. <laughs> um, and when it didn't work, Jason said it was all because of the swirls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the swirls. It's not working. Too many swirls. It wasn't the swirls. It wasn't the swirls. The health system didn't work. It didn't, it didn't gel. I mean, you can see all our mechanics and everything working now, but it was a, an incremental journey. As I said, it wasn't like uh, one minute we were doing this goofy game that was basically a shinobi clone, and then the next minute we were making Ninja Pigs Girl. It was lots of little realizations and steps and, and things floating together. And the health bar was, was one of them. Weeks wasted making health bars. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, how do you make a health system that fits Sort of like an almost emotional struggle. 
It's already been done. Here we go, bros in space. <laughs> the manliest of men using big chunky weapons that shred, well, they don't shred. They just make you feel bad. So bad, in fact, that you have to hide and take like five seconds until you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Raven and I were actually taking the piss out of this. Actually, I think it might have been Tomb Raider, because it uses the same thing. Oh my god, this is so dangerous, I'm just going to have to... Alright, I'm okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and we were taking the piss out, because it's fucking... But... It works. Like when you play Gears of War, when you play this game, it kind of works. Like you don't... it's not completely ruined, you don't go, oh, that's stupid. It, it kind of works, it feels right. And so we were trying to figure out why it felt right. And I, I came to the conclusion that it's because that's what life feels like. For games, uh, you, you just, you know, things are coming at you, things are making you feel shitty. And if it gets too overwhelming, and if you screw up, you just, you need, whoa. And then you're alright. And if you get too overwhelmed, then you fall down, you have to break down. <laughs> but it feels wrong. It, it doesn't match bros in space with big machine guns, but it does match an emotional struggle. So the mechanics, were already there, they just hadn't been applied to the right situation. So we took that and we said, no, 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 we're going to use that, but it is actually emotional stuff. And then things started falling into place. Because if the damage you're taking is actually emotional, then when Jammer gets pushed over, that's fine. It's the laughter that hurts her. And the more people standing and laughing, the worse she feels. And it means that the attacks, the enemy attacks all fall into place because they're not really about damaging, they're about humiliating. They do things that kids really do. Shove her, push her over. The trip up, trip her unexpectedly. Oh, there's a bastard enemy. Hides behind things, pops out, trips you, then laughs. His mates laugh too. It's just a prick of a thing. Um, they throw garbage. And garbage particles are in the air, so. <laughs> they throw garbage. It's not even a real projectile, it's just to make you feel like shit. Uh, and we had people, once again, it's missing the effect. Don't play the game, no way to kill through That That just videos it. So if you screw up or someone else pushes you, it, it just videos you. And that makes you, your emotional state plummet. Because that's, that's the humiliation. It's not the damage, it's how you feel. So we've taken years of war and made its mechanic actually make sense. And it's really exciting and interesting and innovative. And once again, all we're doing is following the story to its conclusion. We're not... I'm not a very good designer. <laughs> really, I just take arcade games and do it again. But the story shapes all this, and, and that's where all the creativity comes from. Oh, here we go. Once again, three questions. <laughs> Two paragraph. What are we at? What's our score? Oh, we've got two oh, Paragon, one Renegade. Yeah. Okay. Three questions. Come on. We're going to put topics up next time. <laughs> <laughs> this is something we've learned, and the audience needs a bit more guidance. Yeah. <laughs> so, if the humiliation is damaging Jenna, yes. how are you displaying that on the screen? Ah, I saw, I didn't go into that. Okay, pretty much have these for us, to be honest. I mean, we, we talk about it being like altering her perception of the world. And I, I sell it as something original, but really lots of video games have done it. Um, the world desaturates, it becomes grainy, it becomes messy. Uh, we're trying to just show you how a person sees the world when they're depressed. Um, all we kind of did was take that to the other extreme as well. So when she's feeling good, it hypersaturates and you know everything blooms. And everything blooms and it's bright and crazy music. And get awesome. and we're going to improve that too, don't play the game. <laughs> um, I've got a, I've got a proper question and a slightly silly question. Slightly quick, slightly question was that a paragon or a renegade? Oh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> we broke our own rules. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah. Well, we both kind of answered it. Yeah, we, we did that before. Well, I don't know. What do you got? No, I was a bit too hopeful. Was oh, I broke right. character. <laughs> it should have been depressed. Half each. Half each. Half each. So now, so now, now that I know that, I can balance it out and yeah. manage it. Oh, okay, cool. Now <laughs> that's why I keep a more negatively slanted thing. Um, yeah, actually, this is again a 
about, about the talk itself. Um, with regards to the whole, you've got these points, but you've got a question. Yes. On that topic. Are you also considering the idea of pre-warning people that these are coming, or do you want that to hit people? Also no, I want, I want people yeah. to be a little bit on it. Okay. Man, you're meta. Okay, we've got one, um, one more, and that wasn't very, very safe either. I'm going to get better at this. Okay, no, we're tired, and there's one question left. So okay, okay, this so. Is oh, this is the deal This is the deal yeah. yeah. I don't know what the consequences are of like. No, no, that's, that's good. I don't know what the consequences are. This is the worst. Um, okay, so ready, eh? <laughs> You are happy. But you have to get in character. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying. I said, normally I'm a very cranky person. <laughs> so, um, so, okay, say you're pushing the bully down yeah. and you're wasting all this time, your pizza's gotten cold and then you deliver it. Mm. So then does the person you've delivered it to, <laughs> do they make you feel bad about the cold pizza? What happens when you deliver a cold pizza? That's very interesting. She just she refuses to deliver a cold pizza. Oh, okay. So Gemma refuses. Gemma refuses. It's the only way of failing the level, basically. Okay. And she she just goes back. The dad puts her another one. Okay. The, the the family is utterly committed to quality. That's their weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> like in this world, the corporations control pizza. They control pretty much everything, and they are desperately poor. This this is good. This is an easy one to be renegade for. Basically, if you value quality above all things, if you uh, value being good, if you value contributing to the world, you're going to be poor. <laughs> you're going to be poor, and you're probably going to be unsuccessful. And this family uh, is a beautiful example of that. They're operating out of a shack. They've got basically no money. Uh, and, but they're absolutely committed to quality. So the only thing they fear is de is delivering inferior pizza. <laughs> and um, that's, that's one of the, the themes of it. And why Janet keeps throwing herself into this situation is like she's sort of overcommitted to that and damages it. She's reckless with herself in pursuit of that dream. And it's not even her dream; it's her father's dream, really. So um, yeah, that's, that's another issue with because that's pretty common with people who are bullied, they often sacrifice themselves too much for other people or other ideas, and uh, she's a side of that. So, since we've now touched the we're renegades, can we throw a renegade question, like, where are we renegades? Is this hell of biographical? No, it just means, <laughs> it just means I'll do the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of getting an uplifting, inspiring, once again, oh, award winning, sorry, inspiring. Yes. <laughs> You're going to get the, the inspiring yeah, one. It's kind of fun being creatively inspired. That's right. You've got an award for creative approach, but instead, you a dose of past reality. <laughs> so, but that's what you wanted. That. That's what you wanted. It was cool, but I didn't think so, that. So, speaking of this, that's where we want to take away. That's it. Oh, is it? Is this yeah. the conclusion? Yeah. <laughs> Have we used up enough time? What does yeah, this so slide mean? <laughs> that was an uplifting conclusion. Have we used up enough time? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. We can blow it's it. Fine. It's fine, yeah. It's one of the players similar twice for the good end. But that should have two. More so questions. Give me more questions to dance at the paragraph. You're looking out for your conclusion, it's all good. Okay. Um, so th th that's just basically how, it's a personal story. I mean, we, we generally we, we've talked about how we think it's good in games, but this is our very personal take on integrating narrative with gameplay mechanics. Um, and it's a stupid thing to do. It's, it's, it's really stupid. There's absolutely not one executive producer or investment manager who would see this talk and advise you all to do it. We, we, we made a game at the start, we, we threw it out. We didn't know what we were doing. We've been making this game for two and a half years, and we're going to go home after this and rewrite some of the end cutscenes because we're still learning about the consequences of bullying and what's a good thing to show people. We threw ourselves on this journey with no clear idea of the destination or length. This is an insane thing to do. How do you pitch a project at the start? You do need to pitch a project at the start, but you don't know what it is yet. And you know you're not going to know what it is until it's done. Because the process of making it is the process of designing it and figuring out what it was you were making in the first place. This is a dumb thing to do. 
And in the process, we have taken ourselves to the very, very edge, and all the edges you can imagine. We're a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and in spite of all that, we wouldn't have done it any other way. And I guess I'll tell you whether we were really, really stupid or not in about eight weeks when we released. <laughs> uh, that is version one of zero point one of our talk. Uh, thank you very much for putting for, for putting participating in. <laughs>
But we haven't seen anything like that. Um, I wasn't prepared for the, the sort of love and support that we received because um, I, I was sucking myself up for we're going to get, I don't know, getting gays or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I've never, I've never had anything like that. Okay, do you want the power of thing now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Human brains are pretty lazy. We have a crazy amount of information to process at any given time and it's exhausting. So we take shortcuts, we compartmentalize and generalize and categorize. We divide our stories into tropes which we recycle over and over and over and then we complain that all the stories have already been told. And this is a stupid thing I have ever heard. People are so interesting. I won't make you tell it. He would, but I won't. I won't make you tell it, but everybody here has a fascinating story. It's okay when life imitates art and art imitates life, but it's a terrible thing when all the stories that we tell only reference previous stories, and when those stories, because we've heard them all before, become more boring than actual people. The world is so amazing and wonderful and terrible. Fiction needs to have its roots in reality, or we might as well all put our control down and go talk to real people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's just about making a good story. I've always been kind of embarrassed about being more about the narrative in games than the gameplay. But the fact is, when you, when you make a good story and then you follow all the what ifs that that brings up, it actually makes your gameplay much, much better too.
uh, like mechanical gameplay challenges because you felt there was a increased interest in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's the balance? <laughs> right. What's there a balance? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's there a balance? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's been a constant friction. Um. Well, definitely levels are coming. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the big thing. It's yeah. something that we're still trying to resolve. Um, and hopefully difficulty levels will do it. Hopefully difficulty levels will do it. Um, the, the, yeah, it, um, it is, because everyone, I think every game designer fears if they put in a very easy, the players will just flip it to very easy and then they won't be excited by the game. And it's like, I don't know, I've played lots of games with very easy and I haven't used it. So, um, yeah, I, we're going to get in a fist fight after this. No, 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 no. I, I ask because it's, it's a similar thing. We kind of get things too quick. Oh, I love the bright colours of this game, but you know, it should be easier for my kids. And like, yeah, I think it's not bad. There's not like a pressure to be um, just an interactive experience, but you want there to be gameplay and challenge as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and balancing those two, and for everybody, because everybody's at a different level when they come in. So. Not only like that, and this could be a this could be, this is another talk. I mean, seriously, this yeah. is a talk's worth of stuff. Uh, not only that, but we feel very strongly about accessibility. Uh, and one of the most moving stories about accessibility I've ever read was about um, uh, an army veteran who suffered brain damage. And he was fine, except he, he was just took longer to neurologically process games. So all he wanted was to be able to slow games down. Now you know how easy it is to slow a game down. Like which is yeah, that's right. Yeah, point seven five to put the game speed in there. So what I'm going to do is in uh, the update after this one, it will be the accessibility one. Players will be able to slow the game down. Okay. I'll be able to just go down and if they want to play the game at point two five for speed and nail every jump, they can. The, the trick is unlocking all those options and not being patronising about it. Yeah. So it's something you can control during the game, so you can speed bits on the game. So well, if you, you want to keep going <laughs> from, to and from the options menu, maybe. And I don't know, and well, maybe that will wreck the game for other people. We don't know. So no, it won't. Hope hopefully it won't. But yes, we have felt pressure to, because we want as many people as possible to play this game. Interesting. Um, uh, we don't uh, want to exclude people, so we're yeah, going that. to have... It has, has, it has an impact on just slow things down, and people use it when they're doing videos and stuff like that. So that when your rabbit is rolling for attack, and you want to show something spectacular by getting hit, you can slow time down just that little section and then take like nothing. Um, yeah. There was yeah. another game that took two weeks, so I can't remember what it was. Oh, I just realised the biggest workload for that update will be fixing all the ammunition so they don't suck. Just have a big particle effect over you when you're running close. <laughs> you're yeah, yeah, yeah. just the yeah. constant yeah. 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 I'm sure it will be really <laughs> easy and lonely taking half a day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and another two features as well. <laughs>